Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be going to our central black hole known as Sagittarius A star and we're going to take a look at one of the most uh, famous stars orbiting around it and find out if we could potentially have a habitable world similar to our planet Earth orbiting around that star. In other words, can we actually find a habitable planet close to Sagittarius A star? Welcome to What The Mad. Alright, so we're going to be moving away from planet Earth, and now we're going to be looking at the center of our galaxy. Let's actually look at it from this distance first, because I would like to actually show you what we know about it and how we kind of discovered a lot of things about it as well. If you uh, type Sagittarius A in um, Space Engine, you'll see that right in the middle of the Milky Way, right there, there is actually something unusual going on. As a matter of fact, you can even see what's happening there if you zoom in close enough. Um, now, this is what and how the scientists discovered that there was a uh, central black hole in our galaxy because they saw the unusual motion of stars. I've talked about this in one of our previous videos, uh, so we're not going to cover this in too much detail right now. But basically, the idea here is that there is actually, or there are a few stars that orbit really, really close to uh, Sagittarius A star. And you can see them if you accelerate time enough and accelerate time enough to actually start seeing the motion of objects here. Now, what you're seeing is basically a bunch of stars orbiting around uh, the central region here. And there's one star in particular known as S2 that we've studied quite uh, profoundly. It was originally discovered back in 2002 and since then, um, we've actually seen it orbit once around this region. And so we were, we were able to establish both um, its uh, a potential mass and also its orbital parameters very, very accurately. And you can actually read more about this star uh, just on Wikipedia, actually, by going right here to the S2 star description. And its uh, orbit um, looks something like this. This is the orbit of the S2 and this is actually the, uh, in com for comparison, this is the solar system with the orbit of Sedna in red and orbit of Neptune and other planets right there as a tiny tiny circle in the middle. So S2 actually orbits around the central black hole in approximately 15 or so years and it's, it basically covers a very, very large region of space in that period of time. And it moves really fast. When, it's, when it gets to the um, periapsis right here, the closest approach, it moves at a speed of about 5,000 kilometers per second. And at this point, it's also experiencing a gravitational acceleration of about 1.5 meters per second square, which is about the sixth of the gravity of Earth. And at this point, it also actually loses um, a huge part of its uh, hill sphere, the so-called area where you can actually potentially hold uh, planets and other things in orbit around yourself. I'm going to show you what I mean uh, by this in a few seconds, but let's actually just uh, zoom out of here for a second and just jump to S2 right now, just to take a look at what we actually are uh, observing and what we're seeing from its perspective. So I actually just wanted to show you if we stay here and accelerate time a little bit, what all of this will look like. So you'll notice that as it moves around space, it's going to basically start orbiting this central region that's right there. It's uh, it's in the, in the back. And um, this is S2's orbit around Sagittarius A star. Now, in Space Engine, it doesn't actually possess any planetary bodies. So if you open up its uh, parameters, you'll see that there's really no planets present here. But I really wanted to discover if it's possible for this particular star to actually have a habitable planet. Now, we're going to do a little bit of mathematics right now just to discover if uh, hypothetically might have a planet with um, Earth-like conditions. In other words, we're going to take a look at the habitable zone and we're going to take a look at uh, the maximum distance of a planet 
or the potential maximum distance for a planet around this particular star, whose mass, uh, if you look right here, is about 15 masses of our Sun. So first of all, let's actually create a miniature Sagittarius A star system with S2 orbiting around it. So there is the Sagittarius A star. Um, and I've tried to copy the actual orbital parameters from the 2002 paper that described um, the star in detail. And right around here, this is the point where the star is going to be moving at a speed of about 5,000 kilometers per second. Uh, now, it does actually show it here. There we go. 5,600 kilometers per second. Uh, and you will see that I've also added the habitable zone to it. And this is the area we're interested in, in determining whether it's possible to have an actual habitable world and basically habitable planet around it. Now, as you can see in this particular simulation, it actually does pass relatively close to Sagittarius A star, and the distance between them is currently approximately 200-ish astronomical uh, units. Uh, so basically, it is not super close, but it also is not super far. And then um, basically does this every 15 years and then it, it kind of leaves and moves to do its uh, apoapsis uh, for a pretty long period of time. But in this region, you could potentially have a habitable planet. Well, first of all, as you can see, Sagittarius A star actually does pass through this region, so it would potentially disrupt any planet in this orbit. What I, what I, what I wanted to discover is, first of all, well, all objects have what's known as a hill sphere. It's the area or a volume, really, or a sphere around the object where it can potentially have a stable um, planet or stable asteroid belt or stable anything, really, stable orbit. So for this particular star, this is within its hill sphere and this is outside of it. So here it can potentially have uh, a Mars orbiting around it. And here, this Mars would fly away and start orbiting around Sagittarius A star. We could actually calculate the Hill Sphere for this particular star by going to the Hill Sphere calculator I've used previously. And here, if we choose 15 masses of the Sun, which is the mass of this star, uh, 4.3 million masses of Sun for Sagittarius A star, and the approximate value for the semi-major axis, which is about 980 astronomical units, you'll discover that the actual Hill Sphere is about 10.3 astronomical units. Now, that's average distance. At the closest approach, let's just say it's about 200 astronomical units, the Hill Sphere decreases to 2.1 astronomical units. In other words, if I go back to the simulation here, uh, and maybe move S2 back to its original, not original, but closest approach, which is right around here somewhere. So right at this point, its hill sphere is much, much lower. It's only about two astronomical units. So you can only have a potential object orbiting in, in this region right here. And as you can see, because the star is already quite massive and quite big, it means that only planets really, really close to the star would be able to actually remain in orbit. So this already answers the question of the viability of having any kind of a habitable planet. And the answer is obviously no, simply because it's just, it can only survive here. And at this point, you can only really have things like hot Jupiters and hot Neptunes and so on. So this particular planet might actually stay in orbit, but even this seems to have escaped actually. Uh, yeah, so there is a star kicked it out of the uh, stable orbit. Now, for this star, uh, the habitable zone is located in the region of space. That's, let me just show you in a second. That's going to be around, uh, let's, let's do this here. So from between 330 to about 640 astronomical units. So this is really, really far away, way, way beyond the um, hill sphere, way beyond the range where S2 can potentially maintain stable orbit of its planets. So what does this mean for S2? Well, forget about habitable planets. We're not going to discover anything here. And as a matter of fact, most of the stars orbiting Sagittarius A star will probably not really have many planets left because they'll all be basically experience the same fate as planet nine right here. They'll get um, captured by Sagittarius A star because the hill sphere of all of these stars will decrease dramatically. And all of these planets and asteroids and all of the other bodies will start orbiting by themselves around Sagittarius A star. So this will probably just end up having a bunch of like random 
stuff orbiting here all over the place. And a lot of this stuff, including like small rocks and so on, will just kind of start um, eventually moving closer and closer to the central black hole and eventually may fall into it and get absorbed by it. And when this happens, we actually do observe unusual uh, increase and in, uh, all kinds of radiation coming from this region. This actually happened quite a lot. Um, and most recently we've observed this and not just observed, but actually captured this uh, by New Star uh, Telescope. And you can kind of see it right here. So this was before the flare, then something fell into the black hole and the flare occurred. And this is the post-flare radiation coming off Sagittarius A star. Now, there were some really big ones. As a matter of fact, we think that about uh, 400 years ago, there was a tremendous flare that uh, increased the radiation by about a million times. Uh, but these happen not very often, and usually they happen when some kind of an object actually falls inside the central black hole. But going back to S2, so it seems that it can only have planets that are orbiting really, really close to it, or not just planets, but any object, and um, those objects would most likely be super, super, super hot, because at this distance, anything is going to be... Let's just place Jupiter here. Anything is going to be... Uh, at the temperature of like several thousand degrees uh, Celsius uh, or really Kelvin. Um, and in this case, this Jupiter will probably stay in this orbit, but get to temperatures of about 3000 degrees. So no habitable worlds around Sagittarius A star, most likely. And so let's actually see if this uh, survives. Oh no, look at that. Jupiter also got captured by um, Sagittarius A star. So every time it passes by close to it, the actual hill sphere decreases so much that it pretty much loses most of the planets. But anyway, so uh, this suggests that there's very, very, very unlikely to be any habitable worlds around Sagittarius A star, even around smaller stars, because a smaller star will actually have even smaller hill sphere. And so for uh, any of these stars to have habitable planets, they would have to be relatively massive. And if they are massive, they're uh, radiation will uh, basically increase the size of the habitable zone and thus uh, prevent it from having any habitable planets. So as you can see for S2, the habitable zone is actually going in through the Sagittarius A star, which is not something that we wanted to see. Well, anyway, this is all I wanted to talk about in this particular video. I just wanted to explore the infamous S2 and discover if it could potentially have a habitable world for us. And the answer is, well, unfortunately not, no. Really, no planets whatsoever would probably stay in a stable orbit here. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Let's finish this video by uh, looking at one of the new additions to the game, which is actually uh, improved supernova. So we're going to observe this right now by decreasing the uh, speed of simulation. And that's going to be the end of this video. Thank you for watching, space out, and as always, bye bye.